What's up YouTube, this is Ringo from Mansphere and today we are going to start a new series talking about TOK. So some of these lessons will be free on YouTube, some of them will be paid to watch on my website. So you guys can feel free to visit my website and I will let you guys know when I upload a new video on that website so you guys can check it out. So before we get going and before I explain to you what we're going to do in this series, I would like to pay a tribute to... Stephen Hawking. He passed away a couple of hours ago. Well, I think it was on Wednesday morning, but I've heard the news a few hours ago. So yeah, he was an amazing person suffering from ALS and it did not stop him from to seek knowledge. He continues to seek knowledge despite of his condition. And he also tries to communicate such knowledge to other people as well. And I believe that this is very inspiring. Mm. And yeah, so I hope that, you know, it could also be a release to him where he's no longer bounded by um, the disease or the ALS disease. So yeah, so that's it. Moving on. You guys should all go read about him or just um, watch that movie called um, The Theory to Everything. So it's quite interesting. So do check it out. So back to this. So these numbers of series, we'll talk about the different types of you know, ways of knowing, areas of knowledge, how do we do a presentation, how do we write a good essay? Because I realize that a lot of teachers in the school are not specialized in TOK. So you know, some of their knowledge and some of the time constraint might not allow them to teach you every single ways of knowing or every different areas of knowledge. But I think that it is important to know it because, you know, without knowing it, how are you supposed to interlink a lot of these ideas? So in this first lesson or this lecture, uh, I aim to go for maybe around 30 to 45 minutes a lecture. And basically we'll talk about you know, what is TOK, ways of knowing, and each week or each video will have a specific topic. And if you think that you want to learn more about that topic, you guys can, you know, click into it, you know, pay via PayPal, and then you guys can watch it. It's pretty much that's it. And I know that a lot of tuition out there could be very expensive. So I made this video, feed, I can talk. I made these video so that it is more um, your pocket friendly. So that's pretty much it. So let's get going. So today I would like to introduce the big concept of TOK. So in our TOK guide, if you guys ever read it, it actually talks clearly about what TOK is. There are three main parts. So here on my screen, you guys can see the first part is knowing about knowing. We'll get back to that. The idea, the other one is the ways of knowing. And last but not least, the areas of knowledge. So what exactly are all of them? Well, so these are the three components that builds up into knowledge, that builds up into you know what we look at in knowledge. So let's talk about the first one today. I mean actually I'm gonna talk about all three today because this is an introductory video and you know then we'll dive right into the different ways of knowing in other video and areas of knowledge in the others. So Today, let's look, let's look at what knowing about knowing is. Remember, I mean, this is accessible on your TOK guide anyway. So, I mean, it's not going to be like hard stuff. I'm going to do a bit of highlighting and you guys can follow on with me. So TOK is a course about critical thinking and inquiring into the process of knowing rather than learning, learning a specific body of knowledge. Okay, so... Basically, keep in mind this, all IB wants you to do is to demonstrate critical thinking, inquiring, and also what is the process of knowing. That's pretty much it. In any essay, you know, we're not trying to do research. I mean, a lot of students do extensive research about one particular topic and give great, amazing details. That's good. That's for your EE, but it's not for your TOK. For your TOK, you know, you just want some knowledge, some ideas that allows you to demonstrate your critical thinking, to demonstrate this. I've been trying to teach critical thinking for many years and I've realized it's very hard because 
it's it's not something that I can teach you to memorize, but it's something that I can teach to analyze. So that's the tricky part. And basically, you know, all school are devoted to at least 100 hours. Good luck with that. Um, TOK diploma program and a sense of reference each other and shared in common goals. The TOK course examines how we know what we claim to know. It does this by encouraging to analyze knowledge claim and knowledge questions. So what exactly are knowledge claims and knowledge questions? I think the way they use the word knowledge claim is to help illustrate what knowledge question is. So a knowledge claim is just, I know X, or we know how to Y. So what does that say? I know about calculus. We know how to differentiate. I know about how emotion affect cognitive development. We know how the river works. You know, these are some knowledge claim. You claim about knowing a certain knowledge, knowledge claim. Whereas the other, the idea of knowledge question is a statement about knowledge. A knowledge question is an open-ended question about knowledge. For example, how do we know emotion? affects cognition. How do we know fresh bulb memory is true? Maybe. Or how did we come to this conclusion about this? Was it because of an empirical evidence? Was it because of scientific method? Was it because of our other ways of knowing? You know, we see and we believe that kind of thing. So a knowledge question is more open-ended and it leaves room for you to explore how the knowledge claim you have got there. So your knowledge claim is, I know how to differentiate. The question is, the knowledge question could be, to what extent or how do you know about differentiation? Are you knowing differentiation based upon memory power minus one move the sorry move the power to the front power minus one or do you have some sort of reasoning for it like you understand the first principle in differentiation you know that is the kind of stuff that a knowledge question wants to explore it's not about what you know but more like how or why we know so that's kind of a thing that you have to keep in mind and IB loves bringing other two things in. This is called shared knowledge and personal knowledge. So I know some schools out there and some teachers, they like, oh, you know, put the personal knowledge and the shared knowledge in. Uh, I mean, yes, you can put it in, but I mean, it's something that you have to consider. So what exactly are they? Well, shared knowledge is, I would say is knowledge that is common. I mean, I don't want to use the word common sense because that's not, very common sense a lot of the time, but it is knowledge that the general public accept or believe to be true. So you can hear my tone. I said believe to be true, but not is true. So another thing before I'm just going to sidetrack. So another thing is that we can't be a hundred percent certain in TOK. I don't want to see the word. It must be. I know it because of this, this causes, you know, these are very, very bad languages that you'll be using in TOK. You know, you might want to use like, it may, it is likely, or it is possible. You know, you would like to leave room because chances are there is another side to that argument or there's another perspective to that argument. So do keep that in mind even go there. Okay, back to share knowledge. The idea of share knowledge is what the majority people know or what they believe they know because that might because you need to understand that share knowledge doesn't mean valid knowledge. I can think of a bajillion example but keep that in mind. You might all know something but it's wrong. So during the tsunami, I think it was um, 2011 when the Japanese tsunami hits, you know, everyone in Hong Kong, you know, they were like, 
oh, you know, iodine can reduce the radiation sickness. So guess what people do? They went to the supermarket and buy like a crap loads of salt, thinking that there's iodine in the salt because someone says. So the shared knowledge at that point was that, ah, salt has iodine. Iodine can reduce radiation sickness. Great job. So let's all buy shared like that. But what they did not know was that, you know, uh, there's not a lot of iodine in salt, especially in table salt. So, you know, that became a shared knowledge, but it's not very correct knowledge. And that's it. And it did piss me off because I was, I, I wanted to get salt because I ran out of salts. But anyhow, so personal knowledge. So personal knowledge is another thing that I think quite interesting. Why is it interesting? Because doesn't have to be true, doesn't have to be valid. As long as you, you, the person, believe it's true, then it's true. There's really no right or wrong answer to personal knowledge, okay? But you need to understand the concept that personal knowledge can become shared knowledge, this kind of thing, because imagine the scientists, you know, they create something new, now people are skeptical about them, and then, you know, who knows, you know, one day they'll find it. I think Boltz was an example. So there, he was suggesting that there are tiny particles that mix up the world called Adam. People thought he was crazy, he was depressed and everything else. And eventually he did hang himself because of the depression. But later on, people did believe him that, hey, Adam exists. So that's pretty interesting. And when we talk about personal knowledge, it could also be a personal belief of fate or faith about religion about something it could also be something superstitious you know you thinking that it worked all the time it's gonna work the next time a gambler for example you know if i flip the head 10 times it's eight times its head what's the ninth time going to be i'm gonna say it's head it's a personal knowledge i know that after how many times of head i think the next time will likely be head so Something very interesting. Um, you know, I live in Hong Kong, so you know I have friends, and we go to Macau sometimes. And you know, I'm not promoting gambling, but you know, my friends sometimes you know do a little gambling with the little dice. So what happens is that you know the dice you can either buy it as a big or a small or like a same number. So my friend kept on saying, Ringo, here we see that there's two games of big, three games of small, and then he spot a pattern. He, he claimed to have spotted a pattern. And he said that the next one is going to be the same number. Me, I was like, hell no, I don't, I don't believe that. You know, if it was big or small, it's either big or small. You know, probability wise, you know, chances of getting all three dice being the same number is tiny. So I'm like, no, uh, whatever he says. So yeah. So that's the idea. The idea of personal knowledge doesn't have to be accepted by different people around the world. As long as you believe it's true, it's true. That's the fact. So that is the idea of knowing about knowing. Okay. So there's also, depending on the type of question, there's more to it. But then that's the main concept. You know, we have to talk about the idea of knowledge claim, knowledge question. And your whole essay or your presentation should revolve around that knowledge question. A lot of students ask me, you know, oh, it's so difficult to generate knowledge question. Yeah, of course it's difficult to generate knowledge question. Write the essay first and then generate the knowledge question because your knowledge question is like a linkage. That knowledge question should link through your examples. That's the idea. So if you generate your knowledge question first, you're going to have like a really 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 hard time thinking about examples because you narrow your mind down to that little tiny question you're not going to get anywhere so that's what i usually tell my student don't write the introduction first write the body first and then go back to your introduction that's the nature of that TOK essay. all right but moving on personal knowledge share knowledge if applicable you guys can put it in if not don't worry about it what about the ways of knowing? So I love giving this little talk about the ways of knowing. Back in 2014, there were only like four different ways of knowing, language, sense perception, reasoning, and emotion. 
And I think in 2014, they have a essay question. It's like, to what extent does imagination, faith, and intuition and memory are also important ways of knowing that a person can acquire knowledge? I can't remember the exact question, but basically they introduced the idea of the four new ways of knowing. So I've said ways of knowing a bunch of times. What is a way of knowing? A way of knowing is a way of gaining knowledge. So do we gain knowledge from language, sense perception, emotion, reasoning, or a combination of all of them? And I mean, this is the arguable, this is a fun part because each type of methodology use uses a different type of uh, way of knowing. For example, I like I said in personal knowledge, you know, personal knowledge, here, right here, right here, let's highlight it. Personal knowledge could be linked with what? Could be linked with faith and emotion. Or your memory may be very different to my memory. And memory, I used to, I usually link it to the idea of experience. So that's the case. So personal knowledge could also be your intuition, my imagination. We could be all different. So that's why, you know, when we're explaining why people know things differently, it could be because that they apply a different way of knowing or they put a heavier weight on one way of knowing over another. For example, you could argue a scientist will put a lot more weight on reasoning and sense perception, whereas an artist or a, 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 yeah, an artist or something, a painter, they will put more on the idea of emotion and sense perception. You don't know. So it really depends on the case, uh, depends on the situation, but these are the things that enable us to acquire knowledge. And that's why it's quite fun to elaborate. So some kind of ideas that we can talk is like, you know, to what extent is emotion reliable? To what extent is sense reception reliable? Is imagination a necessity for scientific discovery or knowledge in the natural science. So remember, you can phrase each one of them into a knowledge question. And these knowledge questions are just wonderful if you're doing a presentation because you know it's so open-ended and you can argue a bajillion side, which makes it great fun. So in the guide, it actually says, the ways of knowing have two roles in TOK. The first one is that they underlie the methodology of the areas of knowledge. And the other one is that they provide a basis of personal knowledge. That's exactly what I just said. So pretty much that's that. So a discussion of the ways of knowing will naturally occur. That's why I'm like, some student asked me, you know, you know, I don't have any ways of knowing. I'm like, you know, you can naturally embed it in. Because when you talk about natural science, chances are that knowledge is gained in natural science through reasoning and sense perception. If you're talking about a scientific discovery, it could be because of intuition. If you talk about religious belief, why that individual continue to believe in a certain religion, you can talk about faith. And then you can talk about the creativity, that the emotional impact of the emotion that a artist wants to portray to the receiver. No, all of them you can talk about. And these are how personal knowledge is formed. So that's the fun part. So yeah, next we have to discuss, what do we have to discuss? Yeah, so teacher should consider the possibility of teaching ways of knowing in combination as a natural result of considering methods in areas of knowledge. So in TOK, they're trying to tell the teachers not to separate ways of knowing it as its own, but rather teach it together with the areas of knowledge, which I agree, but I also agree that it is very difficult to do because ever since you guys were like little kids, you've learned things chapter by chapter. And if I have to teach you things that incorporate different chapters at the beginning, you'll be confused. I mean, even now, if you have to come like, you know, you know, com 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 compose it, like combine things from different chapters in math, you're like, oh, I'm so confused. How the hell do you do this question? So that's the logic. But anyway, I will try to talk about each one of them and later on teach you how it is 
working. So do watch the ways of knowing video first and then watch the areas of knowledge because in the ways of knowing, I'm going to introduce it. Areas of knowledge, I'm going to explain how it in, uh, interacts with it. So that's the fun part. Ah, so that was a mouthful. So this brings us to the last part of this video, which is talking about the areas of knowledge. Mm. Areas of knowledge. Oh, this is going to be a mouthful. So what are areas of knowledge? Just the area of different methodology, I could say. It's a different type of knowledge or different set skills that allows us to generate knowledge in this field. What kind of fields are there? Well, you can read on my screen. This is mathematics, natural science, human science, the art, the history, ethics, religious, they call it religious knowledge system now, and also indigenous knowledge system. So, well, it's quite simple. Mathematics, natural science, human science, and the art. They are such easy things to talk about, where human science and arts, they're more of a emotion kind of thing, and mathematics and natural science is more reasoning. History is not hard to talk about, right? So you just pretty much talk about how or how history or what is history? How what kind of knowledge is history trying to aim or look at? Maybe history looks to the past and natural science looks to the future. I don't know. And there are times when these areas of knowledge overlap. For example, we need to understand how you know scientific development became is also a historical development. So some of these can actually interact. And I think that the harder one here is ethic, religious knowledge system, and indigenous knowledge system. So in ethics, a lot of students, when talking about ethics, you know, it ended up talking about some sort of human science, right or wrong, these sort of stuff. Remember, ethics is not really a right or wrong, it's a matter of perspective. So if you were to do anything about ethics, I suggest that you know you go and read about the different approaches to ethics. Are we looking at a denatology or denatological ethics? Or are we looking at utilitarian ethics? And I can promise you there's like eight more different approaches that I can't remember off the top of my head. So by looking at that and to understand whether there are some sort of cultural difference in the sense of ethics, then we can evaluate what kind of knowledge is produced in ethics and whether that knowledge is acceptable something along that line what about the religious knowledge system well that's pretty much straightforward different religion and it's it's a religious knowledge system because um there's you know input output process within that religion and the knowledge they produce may be very different for each person in that group. So that's why that, uh, you know, even for the idea of you believing in Jesus and God, um, there's different branches of that as well. What about indigenous knowledge? So I love this, you know, being Asian, you know, there's some benefits to it. Um, I mean, in, in, in the Americans, I mean, in, in America or whatever, it's very difficult to kind of grasp this idea of indigenous knowledge. I mean, you, you're, you guys are not Aboriginal, I assume. So it's actually difficult to understand. But if you have an Asian or Chinese background, some indigenous knowledge could be the cultural teaching of your, your, your country or your culture. So, for example, in the Chinese culture, you know, there is this indigenous knowledge about, you know, uh, passing on the family surname to boys, uh, you know, boys has a greater privilege, you know, these are indigenous knowledge. It could also be the idea of Chinese medicine, you know, that is a type of indigenous knowledge. It could also be like the value system, you know, they teach you, you know, how to respect, you know, these sort of stuff, you know, these are all indigenous knowledge system. Think of it as more like a, a cultural system that is stemmed it uh, that has been stemmed from your ancestry thing that leads you to this knowledge system because i mean 
in a lot of texts, but when they talk about indigenous knowledge, you know, they would talk about, you know, aboriginals, how they live, their ways of life. But I mean, to be more applicable here in modern society, it's actually how those type of thinking affects us. You know, why do we still use Chinese medicine? You know, why do people believe in feng shui? That is some kind of ideas, part of the indigenous knowledge system that you can explore. So the knowledge framework is a device for exploring the areas of knowledge. It identifies the key characteristics of each areas of knowledge, depicting each areas as complex system of five interacting components. Okay. This enables students to effectively compare and contrast different areas of knowledge and allows the possibility for deeper exploration. That's why in many different essays, you see them compare and contrast or discuss using two areas of knowledge. So that is the main kind of idea, the, the, the ideology that IB wants you guys to have, is that you want to revolve the whole theory of knowledge into knowing how we gain knowledge and to appreciate the methods, the way of knowing, the ways of knowing that we gain such knowledge and understand that different types of knowledge may have stemmed from a different areas. And from those different areas of knowledge, the type of knowledge could be very different. And lastly, it also wants us to appreciate the idea that, you know, there are shared knowledge and there are personal knowledge and to respect each other into what they say and try to understand why they would say it. So it makes you a, a better person, a less egocentric person, and you know, you would listen and understand the other people's rationale and knowledge. So that is pretty much the introduction of what the TOK lesson is. And you know, all the lessons will be around 30 to 45 minutes, like I said. And for example, this one will be free for access on YouTube. And later on, when I dive more in depth into the different types of ways of knowing and the different areas of knowledge, these will be paid. Um, I still haven't set the price yet, but the range is going to be around, you know, 20 USD per video. It's, I think it's reasonable. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And oh, by the way, I do not provide notes nor PowerPoint because I believe that you should have good note taking skills. You know, you guys will go to uni, okay? And very good professor, a lot of them does not even provide PowerPoint. They would just talk to you. And you guys have to make notes based on what he talks about. And I mean, they sometimes have skeleton notes for you, but that's pretty much it. I will have some sort of skeleton notes for you too uh, on the screen. But most of the time, I really hope that you guys can learn to make notes each lesson. So peace out for now. This is Ringo from Edsphere. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and see you.